And it's AM 1160 WCCS 101.1 FM. Dave Janicek is uh, here in the studio with me now from downtown Indiana. Uh, he is also attempting uh, to get a, in touch with Bill Fontana from the Pennsylvania Downtown Center, uh, who is going to be joining us, we hope, on the telephone as we discussed uh, last night's uh, meeting of downtown Indiana, public hearing having to do with the new bid, which is now rephrased as the IDIA. Uh, and uh, Josh Whittison is uh, in the process of trying to get Mr. Fontana on the line. Meanwhile, let's talk to Dave about last night's meeting. Uh, uh, I don't know that you expected or did not expect uh, that it would um, get that much interest or that much conversation going, but certainly people were interested and, and were uh, uh, bringing up their issues and, and their concerns last night. Exactly, Todd. Uh, you know, this is we've had several um, public meetings prior to this, and then the... Uh, hearing last night that is required by the legislation we did not expect um that many people to show up which is a good thing yeah um if you were there there was about 35 to 40 people council chambers was full so uh that was a, a pleasant uh mm-hmm. su- surprise above our expectations mm-hmm. were the questions that, that you received last night uh questions uh, that uh, you anticipated would come uh some of them were absolutely um it's a lot of the stuff that we've heard in the past um, I know that, you know, Josh reported this morning earlier with some of the questions. Those were questions that we've heard through the, uh, through the process of rebuilding the bid. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were prepared to answer a lot of them. And again, you know, whenever we got to the point where it running out of time, it also did not give the opportunity for a two-way conversation. Sure. So that, that was a, a you know, disadvantage, and it was unfortunate. Well, Bill Fontana is on the line with us right now. You'll put on those headphones so you can hear him as well. Bill, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Wonderful, wonderful. And Dave Janicek is in the studio with us today. So you were at the meeting last night. Uh, were the questions and concerns raised last night uh, questions typical of hearings such as this? Uh, yeah, I think that they are. Um, the, uh, the, the bid law is written at the state level. Um, and uh, particularly when we get into smaller towns and rural communities, some of the questions about the, you know, the way the law is written as far as voting procedure is concerned comes up. Uh, the remonstrance vote or the negative vote process is, is, um, is usually a question uh, raised in a lot of communities. Um, the question of whether this is you know, a tax or a fee um, always comes up. Um, you know, we we always tell people this is much more like a um, a homeowners association fee or the common area charges that you would pay if you moved your business into a shopping center or a shopping mall uh, than it is a, a general tax. And uh, you know, it's I, I know that it, it does seem that it kind of walks, squawks, and talks like a tax, but it's really much more. Uh, akin to a fee. So yeah, we do hear those questions a lot. Dave, you can comment on this as well. Um, the questions that were raised last night, um, obviously people have concerns about the way that this is written. Is there an opportunity then through the process uh, to make changes that were suggested last night, or is this the package that is out there for people to vote on? This is not. I think Bill made it very clear last night that this wasn't a meeting to make decisions. Um, you know, As I spoke last night, and I'll continue to speak, and we've actually put some other information out electronically. You know, I had asked people, don't vote if you have questions. You have 45 days to look it over. And that 45 days, you also have the opportunity to call the office, get a face-to-face meeting with myself or board members, and let's talk through some of the issues that are there. I think any of the issues that came up were ones that I said, you know, we've heard before. There are answers, and there are solutions. So, And I've said this from day one, a perfect bid or the idea, as we're calling it, will work when everybody has input. Um, one of the things you know, that we kind of, as moving forward, is the addition of the advisory board. That advisory board will help to make sure that process continues throughout the bid, uh, the bid life, uh, as well as you know, quarterly meetings of members for downtown Indiana. We want to have communication both ways. So I say you never, you know, there's an old saying, never go to bed angry, never vote if you still have questions. So we want to answer those questions. Um, like I said, you can either call us and we'll set something up. And, and I don't even want to do it on a phone call sort of basis, but more of a face-to-face, one-on-one, sit down and get through uh, some of the concerns. As Bill said, some of the ones that are in legislation uh, or legislative issues, I can't change that. That's above my pay grade. That's a Harrisburg issue. But mm-hmm. the things here, we can change. We can work towards uh, 
some resolution. So uh, I encourage that. Again, I'm going to contact the office, and let's sit down and talk. Bill Fontana, this is Indiana's second business improvement district package. Uh, the first one expired after five years, as is the, the, the way that these are structured. Were the changes in this bid from the previous bid, uh, were they, again, I asked typical, are, are they typical of the changes that uh, will happen from one bid to the next in, in most towns across Pennsylvania? Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think unless you walk in the door uh, the first time through with a bid with a, a very seasoned uh, bid manager uh, at the helm, uh, there is a lot uh, of, of learning that goes on. You know, the, uh, a five-year projection of what's going to happen in a business district is a, is a pretty difficult thing to do. And so, you know, the questions of uh, did we do snow removal right? Um, did we promote the community the way we should have? Um, uh, you know, did we spend enough time on um, dealing with vacancies in the central business district? Those are always questions that come up. And I think that um, I think I think everybody knows in Indiana that they you know the the first time through the bid struggled with some of those issues and I think but I think they've learned from you know from what I've seen in working with the um, downtown Indiana uh, organization over the course of the last nine months or so on all of this uh, there's a a real clear understanding of you know the lessons that needed to be learned the first time through and i think that they have learned those lessons and i think that there's a realization of of trying to keep costs at a level um that makes sense uh for the property owners and so um I, you know I, I i i see real positive growth in what was done over the course of the last nine months when the first bid came along the streets in indiana literally were bumpy uh and uh, and the package had a bit of a bumpy start as well uh, Bill mentioned uh, that unless you had a seasoned bid manager, uh, then these typical these these issues often come up. Dave, you were not here at the beginning of that last bid package. You came was late not. late to the process. Yeah. Uh, so you came at a time when the first bid was in the process of expiring. The the first and, bid was sunsetting at the point where I came on board. Um, changed some staff members. We've got some board turnover. Um, volunteer turnover. Um, to Bill's point, between just the staff alone, there's over 50 years of management experience that I don't think was part of the last um, bid. You know, I can't go back in time and unborn anything that happened. Mm-hmm. And we're not here to blame, uh, you know, our predecessors. We're here, as Bill said, we've learned um, what didn't work. I think we have a better cha- uh, handle on what will work. And if I could predict the next five years and say it's not going to snow or it's going to be sunny every day, I would have a much different job than sitting here in the radio station talking uh, to Todd Marino in the morning. What could be a better job than that? <laughs> a 45-day voting period began yesterday. Actually, it'll begin when the first wave of mailings go out. So right now what okay. we're doing is we're kind of, like I said, you know, we want to get a little bit more feedback. Um, those mailings will go out. When those mailings go out, um, you'll have that 45-day process. So there's no uh, need to hasten to place that vote. Um, again, so as we get more feedback from some of the individuals that did not get an opportunity to speak last night, I think that'll help to uh, to even take that path and make it a little bit clearer. You made the point last week that a healthy bid in Indiana uh, is good not just for Indiana Borough, but for the entire county. It's correct. Um, you know, the, the analogy is, you know, a healthy downtown is healthy for the borough, healthy for the borough is healthy for the county, Healthy for the county is healthy for the region. They all kind of go together. Um, if you look at, uh, you know, this is the county seat. It was the county seat for a reason. It is still the county seat for a reason. You want to keep the heart of the body pumping. Um, when the heart goes, the rest of the body starts to fail. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of the strategy. And Bill Fontana, one of the points made by Josh Rosenberger last week was uh, you need structures such as a bid, in this case the IDIA or the mm-hmm. IDEA, uh, you need those sorts of things in order to uh, go after some of the state dollars, such as the streetscape dollars that, that made such big improvements in downtown Indiana. Uh, you see that happening all over the state, that it, it takes organizations such as um, a, a bid in order to make that happen? Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the big differences, Indiana, uh, seven or eight years ago, had both a state-designated Main Street program and a state-designated Elm Street program. At that time, uh, the Commonwealth was picking up a significant portion of the salary of both of those managers. Uh, 
the Elm Street program was getting about $50,000 a year from the Commonwealth to support the manager's position. Um, the Main Street manager uh, was, you know, a slightly different schedule. They start out at 50000 and then decrease by 5000 a year over the five-year period. So not just for Indiana, but for many communities around the Commonwealth, the, the burden of paying sort of the staff costs that go along with operating, managing, implementing a revitalization effort, a big part of those were covered by the Commonwealth. Um, In 2009, when the bottom fell out of the economy and uh, state budgets suffered severely in the aftermath of all of that, uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, we eliminated the support for a manager's salary. Um, And so many, many communities around the, the Commonwealth had to struggle with this issue of how do we pay for the people that are necessary to operate this thing. What the state said was, look, we'll continue to fund a Main Street program. We'll continue to provide money for um, facades and streetscape improvements and uh, anchor building restorations and money for for marketing and those sorts of things. But local community, you've got to come up with the money for the administrative costs, the support costs of the professional that will run this effort for you. And, um, you know, one of two things happen. Either the very well-to-do communities, the Mount Lebanons of the world, the um, uh, the Swickleys of the world, where there is, you know, substantial discretionary income, uh, were able to do that. For everybody else, it was a struggle. And, and quite a few communities have gone to the bid uh, model of you know everybody kicking in a little bit of money to support the effort and and um, uh, getting a professional management team in place and supporting marketing and and safe and clean and those sorts of things. So, you know that's that's the rationale for a bid in in many communities. Um, I think we said last night that a a fairly decent estimate of what Indiana might be able to bring in in state dollars over the course of a five year um, Main Street designation that would run along with the bid um, effort would be somewhere in the 975000 to maybe $1.2 million range. So um, a, a pretty good return on investment for the property owners and businesses in downtown Indiana. Dave Janicek, uh, we've um, almost reached the end of our time here this morning. Tell me how you see the timeline breaking down. Well, I see the timeline breaking down. Like I said, we're going to conduct, uh, you know, those open, you know, come in, let's sit down and talk. I uh, feel that the that the mailings will go out and within the next you know week or so. Uh, we'll have that forty five day uh, opportunity to vote. It will then go uh, if it meets the standard before council, and council will vote after those forty to five days, which I think puts us into about August, early September. Yeah, I think it's the uh, the borough meeting first tuesday after the first monday in september yeah that's so that's funny. that's that's our timeline at this point in the in the in the interim um we want to keep lines of communication open um and we want to continue to make this uh what we feel as you know bill has a very uses a very good common word an investment in the future of indiana bill fontana thanks for joining us on the phone this morning we appreciate it my pleasure thank you for having me and there he is bill fontana working along with indiana borough and in downtown indiana in order to make the new idea come to pass. David, thank you again for coming. Thank you, Todd, and thank uh, Renda Broadcasting for the opportunity. It is Indiana in the Morning, presented, as always, by First Commonwealth Bank here on AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM. I mentioned that we're we're getting right up to the marker here. The Brian Kilmeade Show is coming up tomorrow. Dave Fairman from Indiana Borough will be joining us. Uh, He'll be talking about the paving program. They're getting set for that. Uh, We'll talk with some folks from the Indiana Regional Medical Center, too, uh, from pediatrics, as a matter of fact. And there's a brand-new facility called the Fountains at Indiana. We'll meet the proprietor, Marcy Colkett, tomorrow here on Indiana in the Morning. Thanks for being with us here today. Enjoy the Brian Kilmeade Show. It is Indiana in the Morning, as presented by First Commonwealth Bank. It's AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM.